I don't know about you, but uh, when Margaret goes to practice at home and she knows she's leading worship, um, it's, I've got to get out of the room and she can get, get out of the room, leave me on my own, she closes the door and uh, we can be there for an hour or sometimes longer, just playing the worship and hear, hearing from God. But um, yeah, it's, it, it's beautiful, you know, and, uh, but it's great to have that in the home and uh, thank God for that. But I, in the week I was doing some studying and prepping and um, th- this, this whole thing of, of, uh, of that, the fact that we've got a new name coming, you know, in, in the beginning of September, new name to the church, it's going to be called Life Church, and Pastor Paul last week spoke an excellent message, as he always does, um, on, on, on the fact about the life of the church, and um, I was just, uh, just so inspired by it, and I thought, right Lord, uh, the Lord took me to some scriptures, and um, as I uh, read them, I re- came to realize that the DNA of the church is changing. Now, for those of you who don't know about um, the DNA, uh, the DNA is what makes us up, what, the way we are. It came from our parents, our mother, our father, and that's what made us who we are today. And, you know, Psalm 100 and verse 3 says this, Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. And that's a verse that uh, I I think is very good about about the church, uh, that it is God who has made the church. Jesus said, I will build my church. It's his construction. It's, It's his design. And so we see that, that it is God who has, uh, who has made us and not we ourselves. And this is sometimes uh, been the error of some that whereby they want to do church their way. You, you might have it. I've done it. I've, you know, I used to be, you know, when I, I remember in the early days when I was coming, when I was into pastoring, I don't know if you've been, you go and visit other churches. And I'm sitting there in amongst this church who I don't know from Adam. I don't know anybody there. Perhaps I'm on holidays. I've gone to a Sunday morning service. And I sit there and I realize I had a critical spirit. Because what was ever going on, I was saying, oh, I wouldn't do it that way. Oh, no. Go, go. Yeah. You know, what do they want all this stuff for? Oh, what are they, you know, and I'm making judgment on them. And, I, and I've had to learn by hard knocks that the Lord has had to take me aside and, and beat me up a little bit to understand, stay out of my church. If you're going to be like that, stay out because I'm building my church, not your church. And, I, and for me, it was a wake-up call. And I had to repent about it. I mean, it took me quite a while to get to stop doing that, I must say, because I thought I was good. You know, I thought, you know, I've been a pastor for two years, for goodness sake, you know. what is it? <laughs> but sometimes we can be like that. We can come to church and we can prescribe what we think it ought to be. But truly the church is a mixture of people who have, got, who have gone through a DNA change. Now you're saying, what's DNA? Good question. Glad you asked it. But the, I'm going to give you a bit of what, I, what I've seen now in the medical, in the medical or science, uh, in the science realm. And about DNA. DNA is stored in every cell of the human body. Within each cell, there is a 5 foot, 1.8 meters length of DNA in every cell of your body. amazing but more than that the human body consists of approximately approximately 67 billion cells total dna in the human body is is sorry the, the human body consists of approximately 67 billion cells and the total dna in the human body in the human body is approximately 10 billion miles and wrap around the earth two and a half times and that's just in you I mean, look at me, you might say, well, it's a bit longer in you, because, you know. <laughs> yeah, okay, I won't pick on anybody. Um, or stretch it, this is a good one. So it'll go around the earth two and a half million times, but it'll, go, it'll stretch to and from the sun 300 times. That's just one body. 
Some of you are greedy and you want to stretch a bit further. I know you, you like to travel. <laughs> and so we see that we under our understanding of, of, of DNA is it that at the time of conception, where male sperm and the female ovum joined, the DNA contained in each divide and pair off together. With each half of male DNA and female DNA joined together to form a new DNA of the baby. So you've got a bit of your father in you, a bit of your mother in you. Okay, unless you went other species. I don't know. I mean, what happens when you're born in a Petri dish or something like that? I mean, that's what they're playing with today, aren't they? You know, it's a bit, a bit weird. DNA contains the instructions needed for an organism to develop, survive, and reproduce, such as hair and eye color, what we look like, etc., family traits, you know, or he walks like his dad or something like that, or he's got the face of his mother or something, you know, something like that. To carry out these functions, DNA sequences must be converted into messages that can be used to produce proteins, which are the complex molecules that do most of the work in our bodies. Now, you didn't know that, did you? Any scientists here? No. And, uh, but I was impressed by that, and so I thought I'd write that statement down, it might make me impress, be impressive, you know? But I'm gonna clear what it's about, but anyway. But what I'm coming to is this, that the church has a DNA. Every church has a DNA. They, when that church was birthed, the, when God came and, and brought the church together, he, he had a plan for it. He said, this is how I want you to be. This is the kind of church I want you to be. And, and now we're going to this name change of Life Church, so that when we put the sign outside and it said, Life Church, or welcome to Life Church, there's something that we now become accountable to it. So that when people come in, that they are going to experience the life of Christ, the life within each and every one of the members of the body of Christ within a given church. And of course, as far as God is concerned, he wants it throughout his whole church. But, so, but we need to, to understand that we, you, I, individual, if you say you belong to, to, to life church, that you are going to seek to manifest that life. Not according to how I or anybody else might say, but according to how the Word of God says it. And that's important. For years, you know, we would try to impress people and, and try to sort of, you know, make out that you, that you are this, that, or the other, when the truth of the matter is, it's all about Jesus. You know, the Bible speaks about humility. Walking in humility. No, that isn't a false thing. It's not like sort of, you know, it doesn't have a particular, you know, way of walking, you know. Oh, he's a very humble brother, you know. It's like, it, <laughs> it's, it's that whole thing, you know, go back in the day, you know, when, when my, my dad especially, go, or go back and it was normal to go to church, with, you know, like with a dark suit on, black suit, you know, black belt and black braces. Why they needed braces and belt, I don't know. But that was it, and a black Bible under your arm. And that was the character, that would say, oh, they're church people. But today in which we live, and we need to understand that, you know, that hasn't worked with people out there. It might say that you, are, you go to church, but it doesn't really say, do you know Christ? Because Christ is only known in his character. I only know you by the character uh, in, uh, and, and you of me as well, that you, you know my character by fellowship, you get to know one, uh, one another, and so we recognize and we can identify some people and say, oh boy, you know, that, that, that someone or, or other is, is such and such. It's big, why? Because it's their character. Oh, they're happy, they're clappy. Oh, they're, they're, they're serious. Oh yeah, they're, you know, they're walking theologians or something like that, you know. And, but we're all different, but however, there, there is the responsibility upon each and every one of us to reflect the character of Christ. Let Christ dwell in you richly, the Word of God says. And so by the Holy Spirit, that we don't have to do it on our own, it's not our own method, it's the life of the Holy Spirit. As the Holy Spirit came to indwell within us when we received the forgiveness of sins and came to Christ and acknowledged Him as Lord and Savior, we received something. What did we receive? We received the Holy Spirit that 
begins the change of the DNA in our, own, in, our, in our spiritual walk, in our spiritual life. The, David, uh, the psalmist rather said in Psalm 139, he says this in verses 13 to 16, You made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. And there is something about that in the, in the DNA of the church that God wants to do something, wants to impress, to impress, to produce within us the character of Christ to everyone that we meet. To everyone that we meet. Not just in church. Oh, I'm sure you've known it. You know, I knew quite a few people who, oh, they were saints in church, but they were, they were something else outside of it. And sometimes I got to hold my hand up and say, yeah, you used to be like that, boy. But we need to understand that we are going through a change. It is from glory to glory, the Bible says, that we are being changed. There's a transformation going on. And some people, you know, that we realize that the, that the enemy, of course, doesn't like it. So he, he wants us back out. He, he wants us back to where he is. But we are now in a new kingdom. And in this kingdom, there are terms and conditions that are outlined, not because I outline them, but because they're outlined in the Word of God. The psalmist goes on to say, You watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion, as I was warmed together in the dark of the womb. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. David said this, he said, Lord, teach me to number my days. There is something about, if we relate that to church life, we don't know how long we're going to live. We don't know, we, we live by the grace of God. And as the older you get, and then, you know, I, I was thinking about my parents. My parents died in their 80s, 84, I think it was, and they're about 86 86 and 87, was it? No, 86. Okay. They died about 86. Well, I'm thinking to myself, well, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a young 72 now. You know, I've got a bit of, you know, you know, I've, you know, they tell me it's good if you can live to 86, you know. But the truth of the matter is this, that I don't know how much time I've got. But he does. And it's recorded in his book. And he knows it. And so, I, I used to think about it, and I, uh, you know, I have some weird thoughts. I got to be honest with you. I wonder sometimes how I'm going to leave this planet. Just yeah, stop and think. Will it be like Star Trek? You know, beam me up, Scotty. Hey, you know, right, Lord? Come on. Jump to try and help him. Take it. But we need to understand that we are here for time. And in our time, we come to realize, you know, Jesus be the center of my life. And sometimes we need to address that whole issue. We need to address it before God. We need to address it in light of his word. We need to understand that, that, that we have a limited time on this earth. And, and I look back, and Margaret will tell you, the number of the most, one of the, if I'm feeling on a downer, I will say, I wish I never did that back then. And then she slaps me and says, for goodness sake, you can't change the past. Live now for, for today and for the future for Christ. Yeah. And that's the truth of it, folks. Some of us can be so way back there. Well, that's how we did it over there. That's how we used to do it. But God is wanting us to get, to get in line with, with his purpose, which has always been his purpose, because Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And he said, I want you to be my messengers. I want you to go into all the world and preach the gospel. I want you to share your faith. I want people to, when they walk with you, when they talk with you, when they journey with you, they don't recognize you, they recognize the Christ within you. How about giving it a try? Let's see if we can allow the DNA that is within us to take charge, this new DNA that we've been born again of the Spirit of God and to be manifest to the world that is outside. There are things that we're going to be called upon. We see the governments are changing, the laws are changing. You know, we need the wisdom of God in how we answer people. We need the wisdom of God to understand what people are going through. 
is to understand, Lord, what's going on in the street in which we live. Lord, I pray, help me, Father, to be a, of good character, your character, to the, my neighbours, that they can speak well of me, not out of any pride or anything like that, but that they know that Christ lives in here. And so we see that, you know, that... Uh, so we understand. But this is the point, I, I, one of the points I want to get across to you this morning. Look, we have a limited time on this planet. I was singing a song last week, you know, it's, uh, I wish I had given him more. Because I realized there were things reserved in my life I didn't want him to touch. Are there things in your life that you don't want, to, want Jesus to touch? Not prepared to face up to them? To the responsibility. And there comes a responsibility upon us. You are not your own. You've been saved by what? By the precious blood of Jesus Christ. He paid the price for you and for me. And so we are called to, to live that life. And that's the, the new DNA that is now within us. Because it's now we are born of the Spirit of God. The spiritual problem with our birth is this. Our natural birth. Psalm 51 verse 5 says, For I was born a sinner, yes, from the moment my mother conceived me. I was born a sinner. I was born in sin or shaped in iniquity. It's the DNA of the human being without Christ. That's, that's the old nature. The problem is sin. It is the spiritual genetic inheritance of all flesh. We're all sinners. We were born in sin, we're sinners. Guilty as charged. But the wonderful thing about it is this, that in Christ, we, have, we go through that process of being born again, as, as Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again. Romans 15.12 says, when Adam, uh, 15.12 says this, when Adam sinned, his disobedience, sin entered the world. Adam's sin brought death, so death spread to everyone, for, for everyone's sin, or for all have sinned, for, for you older ones, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We weren't up to God's standard, but now in Christ we are. We are allowed into the presence of God. When the veil was torn in twain on the day when Christ gave his life for us and his blood was shed for us and the, and the veil was torn, it wasn't to let God out, it was to let us in. That we could come into the very presence of of God himself through Jesus Christ and so the DNA we each inherited from Adam and Eve the DNA of old nature is, ex is expressed in the way we conduct our lives Galatians 5 19 to 21 says this that it, that it was brought about by our disobedience when Adam and Eve sinned against God and, and partook of the forbidden fruit they disobeyed God and so it is the Paul writing to the Galatians, he says this, when you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissension and division, envy, drunkenness and wild parties, and other sins like these. Let me tell you again, says Paul to the church in Galatia, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. Wow. That's heavy. That's a heavy word there. But we, I believe that where God wants to take the church, what he wants to take us into, he's going to do it through a people who have, who have allowed the Holy Spirit to bring the changes that are necessary, that have forsaken the old life, forsaken the old DNA, and have been born again of the Spirit of God. And so we... We as God's people, we have a responsibility for the time that we have on this earth to say, Lord, here I am, wholly available. Yes. Not 20%, not 50%, not 75%, but 100% available. 
And sometimes we get so worked up and caught up with trying to be something when Jesus wants us just to be who we are in him. Let his character shine through us. It's like the Ready Break advert they used to have years ago, you know, when they came on the TV and the boy came running out on a dark, cold day, but he had his Ready Break and there was all this gold aura about him as he, as he went to school or whatever. And it's just like that for us. That when we come out of the presence of God, and sometimes, sometimes we, 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 we work so hard at it. You know, we work, oh, I've I got to be right, I've got to be right, I've got to be right. Yeah, I've got I to gotta, I gotta be right. Uh, yeah, I've got to be right. I've I, I got to be right. I said, I'm going to work more, I'm going to work harder. I tell you what, there is a rest given unto us as the people of God, and it's in Christ. I, what value do you put upon the blood of Jesus Christ? Is it a thing that you just swipe away? Is it something? Okay, Jesus died. Thank you very much. It was in the school where I used to teach in Swansea, in our staff, like uh, especially like the mid-morning breaks that we would have. We used to meet in a little, little box room, and uh, tea would be brought on a tray for us all, uh, the team there, to, to, uh, uh, in the technology department, uh, to have a cup of tea uh, in the mid-morning. And then one of the, the, the ladies there, a mature lady, um, she let it be known, uh, because she knew that I was a Christian, and she had been speaking to, so to another member of staff about this whole thing of being born again. And I just happened to overhear the conversation. And th- this chap wasn't, he was a, yeah. How can I say? I don't know if I'd want to be friends with him. And this is what he said, and I couldn't believe it. He said, all you've got to do, he said, is give your life to Jesus, and then if you sin, he said, that's okay, because you just ask for forgiveness. And, and I couldn't, I thought, what? Where did he get that from? And it, it struck a chord in me that sometimes that we, we just say, it's okay, I can, I can sin. I can go and sleep with somebody. I can go and, and, and do something which isn't right, that God wouldn't be pleasing unto God. I, I can do that because I know that, that I can go before my Heavenly Father and ask Him for forgiveness, and He will forgive me. That's not how it is. There has to be a change. And that change is there. Jesus, as I said to, before, Jesus is in dialogue with Nicodemus. He says this, Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. We can never get into the kingdom of God. We can never see it. We can never express it. We can never reflect it. If we have not been born again, Paul writes to the church in Colossae in chapter 1, 13 to 14, says this, for he has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son who purchased our freedom and forgave our sins. What value do we put on the blood of Jesus Christ? It's a challenge that, I, that to me, and, and, and what I love, when I think about it and how, you know, over the years, it's become that, that thing that, that when I have sinned, that's, the thought that comes to my mind, what value do you put on the blood of Jesus Christ? But we are, we are of a new nature, the DNA of a new nature, and it is expressed by our obedience to God's word, aided by the Holy Spirit, which dwells within us, the terms and conditions of the kingdom of, Christ, of where Christ reigns. If he's king, he has authority. If he's king, there are rules and regulations. Now you might say, oh, now you're being very carnal, you're being very hu- human and be that. No, no, no. It's expressed in the word of God. Galatians 5, again, 22 to 23 says this, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. Hallelujah. This is the character of the new life. Where love is found, where joy is found, where peace is found, where patience is found. Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. 
that is how this DNA expresses itself, this new DNA, that we've been born of the Spirit of God. You see, the old DNA led us to death. The new DNA leads us to life, eternal life in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And so this morning, you know, Paul writing to the church in, 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 in 2 Corinthians 13 says this, Examine yourselves to see if your faith is genuine. Test yourselves. Surely you know that Jesus Christ is among you. If not, you will fail the test of genuine faith. Is Christ amongst us? Is Christ in your home? Is Christ in your walk? Is Christ with you? Do you have a real sense of his presence with you? That when, you know, sometimes, we, you know, Margaret and I, we, we, uh, we go for walks and things like that, and, and sometimes I go on my own, and I enjoy the walk, and sometimes Jesus shows up, and we have a little chat, and we have a talk, and then he shares something from his word to me. I go, wow, Lord, that is just amazing. So I want to encourage us that as we go through this name change, let the name be reflected in us and through us. That we have life. And we want the world to know about it. We want to know the world to know about it. And so I would encourage you this morning that as we come around the table of the Lord, Richard is going to come now and, and, uh, and minister at the table of the Lord, that as we partake, let's do our own self-examination. Perhaps I... I've served something in you. But God wants to do so much more through you. Through us. God does. He's not waiting, you know, we're waiting for God to move. God is waiting for us. He wants to be there with us. He wants to, he wants to be in the midst of us. But when we come together, it's not about any stars that are on the piano or any stars that are on the pulpit. It's not about that. It's all about Jesus. I made a decision not so long ago, a few years ago, recent years. I decided to believe what the Bible says. Yeah, I'm going to give it a try. I stumble on some things. I work through them. Oh, Lord, help me to ask me big things in that book. But there's one thing I, I know. You know, We can rejoice this morning because our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Yeah. But don't sit back and think, oh, well, that's it done then. Yeah. No, we have a responsibility yes. to the lost out there. Yes. I don't know what you think about it, but they're going to hell. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we have a party and they're going to hell. <coughs> we have a pantomime, but they're going to hell. And there needs to come into us a realization you might say to yourself, well, I'm not a very good at speaking to people. Don't worry. Let the character of Christ reflect and be through you. God is wanting to so move in our land. And boy, we need him to move. The challenge is, is God waiting for me and me waiting for you? To get in alignment to his word. To prove that that book works. Lord, make it so. Make it so. Lord, do whatever you've got to do in me. Straighten me out. Get the kinks out. Get, the, get all the, 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 the stuff you don't want in me. Get them out of me. And I, and I say it. and I don't want to say something that I would boast in myself. God forbid. Bible says you're going to boast about it and anything you boast about Christ, what Christ has done for you. And so we as God's people, let's give this book a try. Let's see if it works. And believe in faith, people of faith, that we can be tested and found to have faith before God. That we believe in. That what is good. Lord, help me guard my tongue, guard my thoughts, guard my vision, guard my hearing. All those things that allow the enemy to get in. Help me, Lord. To guard what I see, guard what I hear, 
God, what I said. Let's come around the table of the Lord. Thank you, Richard. We're going to come and let it be a time of self-examination. But I want to say this to you.